Hey, this is Mr. James. In this video, we're going to be looking at the IXL problems for systems of linear equations. So start by going to IXL.com, go to Algebra 1, then scroll down to look at the systems of linear equations section. Those are the U problems. Now, when you watch this the first time, watch the whole way through. Then, when you go and try the IXL problems, just watch the problems or the parts of the video that you're having trouble with. For example, if you know how to do U1 and U2, but you're stuck on U3, just fast forward this video to watch the part on U3 again so you can get a better understanding, then go back and try it yourself. So we'll start with U1. Is XY a solution to the system of linear equations? All right, so let's start here. We are working with uh, U1, U.1, all right. Um, is 2 comma 1 a solution to the system of linear equations? So all you need to do is, when you've got a system of equations like this, we're trying to determine if what, what numbers for x and for y can be substituted into both these equations so that they are both true. Not just one, but both. So to check this, we can write out 4x plus 11y equals 19 and x plus 4y equals 15. Then we're going to substitute in the value 2 comma 1, 2 comma 1, remember it's always x comma y, x comma y, uh, into, this, into this equation to see if these are our solutions. So for x we'll put in 2, so 4 times 2 instead of x now, plus 11 times 1, that's y, instead of y now, equals 19. And over here, we will have x, that's 2, plus 4 times y, that's 1, so plus 4 times 1 equals 15. Let's see if these are both true. So 4 times 2 is 8. So I'll just right here, we got 8 plus 11 times 1 is 11 equals 19. Is that true? Yes, that's true. So 2 comma 1 is a solution to the first equation. And let's see here. Um, 2 plus 4 times 1 is, is 5 equals 15. Is that, is that true? 2 plus 5 is 7. That is not 15. So in fact, although the 2 comma 1, 2 for x and 1 for y, is a solution to the first equation, it is not a solution to the second equation, right? That those, that's not a solution that, that does not make sense to me. So this solution is not a solution to the system. It is for one, but not for the other, and so it is not a solution to both. So I will go over and select no. On the other hand, let's take a look at this one. Is 1, 1 a solution to the system of equations? So we've got the point 1, comma 1, and we've got x plus 8y equals 9. And we've got 2x plus 14y equals 16. Now if I plug 1 in for x and 1 in for y to these equations, let's see what happens. Well, the first one will have 1 plus 8 times 1 equals 9. Uh, that's 1. 8 times 1 is also 1. So 1 plus 8 is 9. So this does work. 1, 1 is a solution to this system. Um, what about this one? Well, let's see, 2 times x is 1, so 2 times 1 plus 14 times y is 1 equals 16. Does that, is that a solution? Well, 2 times 1 is 2, 14 times 1 is 14, 2 plus 14 is 16, 16 equals 16. Yes, that is a solution to this. So 1 comma 1 is a solution to both of these equations, which means it's a solution to this system of equations, both of them put together. So I'll select yes for this. All right, hopefully you've gotten some experience with U1. Let's try U2 now. Remember, we are now in U2. Solve system equations by graphing. Solve the system equations by graphing. First graph the equations and then type the solution. So in the past we've talked about how we know when two equations are equal to each other. That's the same thing as saying when do they both equal the same number or when uh, do both of these two equations have the same solution. We can do that by graphing them and seeing where their intersection is. So first, let me scroll down and take a look at this graph. It's got these two buttons at the bottom, one green for y equals negative 6, and one purple for y equals x minus 3. 
let's start by graphing the screen one, y equals negative 6. So I click, click the green button, and we've got, let's see, y equals negative 6. I graph that by, well, there's no x here, which means the slope must be 0. Uh, and I've got this negative 6 here by itself, which means that my y-intercept is negative 6. So let's go to negative 6, and slope is 0. There's my line. Now for y equals x minus 3, I click the purple button, and how do I graph that? Well, my, my slope is 1, because that can be 1x, and my y-intercept is negative 3. So I go to my y-intercept, negative 3, and I do a slope of 1, so up 1 over 1, and there's my purple line. Now, where do these have the same solution? That is, where do they intersect? Right here, they seem to intersect right there. And the point of that is going to be, remember x first, uh, negative 3 and negative 6 for y. So the solution is negative 3 comma negative 6. Let's try one more. Let's see, on this one, my first line is negative x minus 2. So I'll click the green button. Uh, let's see, my, my y-intercept for that is negative 2, so that's where I'll start. And my slope is negative 1. See how that's negative x? We put a 1 in front of that, so it's negative 1 over 1. So down 1 over 1, there's my green line, click the purple. Uh, 1 fifth x is my slope, and 4 is my y-intercept, so I'll go to 4 in the y-intercept, the y-axis, and then a slope of 1 fifth. Hmm, well that's across 4, so over, oh, sorry, over 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up 1. There it is, that's my purple line. Now, the solution, or where they equal the same thing, is where they intersect. So that's right here, right here. Oop, don't want to click twice, that's, that's right here. Um, so let's see. For x, that is negative 5, and for y, that's 3. So the point where they intersect is negative 5, comma, 3. Good. Hopefully you learned a little bit about U2 here, and you can do this yourself. Now let's take a look at U3. Now we're in U3. Solve a system of equations by graphing word problems. So these are the same as the last one we did, except now instead of given two equations, you're given two kind of word problems to work with. Now there's a lot of writing in this, so I suggest grabbing a little bit of scrap paper, grabbing a marker you can write on the screen with, and I'll actually pull up some scrap paper here in just a second. All right, we're now taking a look at U3. Solve a system of equations by graphing word problems. Now, these are word problems, so they're going to be the same math as before, uh, but we're going to have to do a little more reading, a little more thinking to figure this out. So I suggest you grab some scrap paper or markers you can write on the screen. I'm actually going to pull off this, this paragraph here so we can mark it up uh, on some scrap paper ourselves. All right. So let's take a look. Students in Ms. Hodge's third grade class are working on times tables. And they demonstrate mastery by passing tests. Martha has passed seven tests so far. Okay. Seven tests so far. Um, her classmate, Desmond, has passed three tests of them. Those sound kind of like starting points or, or y-intercepts. I think we're going to use those in a minute. Let's mark that. Starting points or, or y-intercepts. From now on, Martha plans to take and pass one test per week. Meanwhile, Desmond plans to do three per week. Okay, so these kind of sound like rates of change or slopes. So it's kind of a slope for, for Martha and, uh, and a slope for Desmond. Okay. At some point, Desmond will catch up to Martha. How long will it take? Well, it sounds like we're going to have to figure out when uh, those two those two kids, Martha and Desmond, um, they have the same task. So that's where the, their graphs kind of intersect, just like we were doing before. But before we're able to make a graph, we're going to have an equation. So what's the equation going to be? Well, we'll start with Martha. I'll make an equation for Martha. So Martha, y equals, well, what's the slope for Martha? Well, Martha was working on one test per week, so her slope will be 1x. Uh, and she started with seven tests. So that's like her y-intercept. So her y-intercept is plus 7. On the other hand, Desmond, Desmond, uh, let's see for him. Well, what was his slope? What was his rate? Uh, he was doing three tests per week. So that'll be, his rate is three tests per week, or 3x. And he, but he already did three of them to start. So plus 3, it's a starting point, it's y-intercept. Okay, now that we've got our equations here, our system, we could say, we can go back to uh, the 
IXL, the program, and uh, try to make some graphs here. All right, so now we're back with IXL. Uh, you'll see at the bottom, there are these two buttons, one for Martha, one for Desmond. I'll start with Martha. Click on that green button. Uh, Martha starts off with um, 7. It's her y-intercept. So let's go to 7. Okay. And then her slope is 1, so over 1, up 1. Okay. One test per week. Desmond, on the other hand, let's click the pink button here. Desmond, he starts with three tests, or so y-intercept is three. And then every week, he does three more. So over one, up three. One, two, three. All right. And now we look to see where they have the same number of tests. And that is right at this point right here, right at the intersection. Now, they asked me, how long will it take? So how many weeks till they are have the same number of tests done? That looks like two weeks. If we look at the, the intersection, we go down, that's two weeks right there. So the solution is going to be two weeks, and there it is, submit. Nice, let's do one more. Okay, one more. Again, I'll just copy this onto the scrap paper. Mr. Shah is contemplating which chauffeured car service to take to the airport. The first costs $30 up front and $1 per mile. The second costs $15 plus $2 per mile. For a certain driving distance, the two companies charge the same total fare. What is the distance? Okay, well, if I look at this, I've got these two different, um, I guess, car services. So I've got car, car service one and car service two. Uh, now, let's go and take a look at both of them and see what the equations are. Well, for car service one, it says the first cost $30 up front and $1 per mile. Now, the $30 up front, that's my starting point or my y-intercept. Whereas the $1 per mile, that's my slope. 1x plus 30. The second costs $15 plus $2 per mile. Again, the 15 is my, my slope, or sorry, my y-intercept, my starting point. And the 2 is going to be my slope, $2 per mile. Let's see how this looks on the graph. All right, let's take a look at our graph. Whoa, now there's one big issue here. Take a look at the scale. It's not going up by 1s like the last one was. Instead, it's going up by 5s. So 5, 10, 15, 20. So in a graph, this, I've got to make sure that I watch out for that. So car 1, it's got a y-intercept of, of 30. So first company, starting with $30 for the fare. So that's right here. Um, but it's going to go up $1 for every mile. But here, I can go forward by 1 mile. I go forward by 5 miles. So let's see. If I go forward 5 miles five miles. Um, that's one dollar per mile. They'll charge me five dollars. Okay, so that means I can go five miles and I have to go up five dollars. Now five miles is one of these squares and up five is another one of these squares. So there's my, my graph. For car two, click that button right there. Uh, I start with 15, so starting right there for my y-intercept. Um, and this time I have a slope of two, but again there's no, this doesn't go up in increments of 2, it goes up in increments of 5. So if I go 5 miles with this second car company, um, it's $2 per mile. 2 times 5 is 10. So I'm going to go up $10 my fare. So forward 5 and up $10 my fare. So from 15 all up to, to 25. Good, I've got my two graphs, and now I look for where they intersect, figure out when they're going to be equal, and that's at, looks like, 15 miles, you, they both charge $45. They want to know how many miles, so that is after 15 miles, where they intersect. Perfect. Hopefully you learn a little bit about U3. Lastly, directions for U4. Find the number of solutions to a system of equations by graphing. I will put on the board. Good luck.